Hi Olaf, nice to meet you. You are the brain behind um, Christian Blumfeld. So tell us about the numbers or uh, as a prediction time you counted for him. Um, in uh, On Sunday, I think with the weather that is here, uh, of course, maybe I shouldn't say too much about it. <laughs> I, I don't know. So I asked so Joe Skipper and he tells me that um, all the um, prediction times of um, Christian are a little bit too slow. So he um, knows that you want to be a little bit faster on the bike. But um, yeah, so what kind of process do you use uh, or do you use also your numbers of training for this whole project? The thing is that this kind of this kind of race is a little bit unpredictable because the dynamics from what we have experience with is very different. Uh, normally, in a race uh, in a triathlon, you normally try to distribute energy as evenly as possible so that you you get the fastest possible finish time, not necessarily the fastest possible swim, bike, or run time. Um, one thing that's different here is that none of the athletes here, not female or the males will actually be at, the, be at the same power as they will be racing in an Ironman. So that allows us to, of course, play a little bit more around with the training in a little bit different way. Try to... Swimming, obviously, the, the, there are the limitations because the swimmers can go faster. They can open up a gap if they really wanted to. Um, on the bike, uh, um, it's almost impossible for, for a peloton to go faster than these guys uh, or too fast uh, for the guys so they will still stay at a power that is lower than what they do in an Ironman but then because we don't have to prioritize the biking as much in the in the training leading up we can rather shift more of the focus onto the running and bring that speed up and do faster runs and I think the run splits are open uh, or disclo uh, disclosed so uh, there uh, I think if St. George only four weeks away. If we had a little bit more time, um, I think we would be pretty confident with 2.20. Now, we haven't been able to do as much running because St. George was uh, pretty close, but 2.25 is probably quite realistic. On the bike, I think, um, uh, of course, as you can see, there are no lack of wind turbines here, but the wind conditions for, the wind conditions for Sunday looks very good. So I would expect uh, somewhere around 3.30. That's probably uh, maybe faster. On the swim, uh, yeah, 45 minutes. Uh, um, of course, in, in St. George, we can use that as a reference because he was sick. He had uh, problems during the start, uh, coughing up uh, and stuff. But. Uh, I think it's realistic with uh, with uh, with the swim paces to yeah, go 45 at least, uh, but you never know. Yeah. We we don't know the conditions, <coughs> we don't know the location, so there are many things that are unknown. Yeah. And you're confident that um, after such a hard bike or after such a long bike, it is possible to run a marathon with a negative split. So normally in um, the Ironman distance, you run not in a negative split. Normally <laughs> it, it's a little bit slower to the end. So uh, it sounds like uh, that you're predicted to uh, run to the 20K mark. And after that, they will decide um, if they can um, yeah, do a negative split. Do you think it's uh, possible with two pacemakers? I, uh, I think uh, uh, that if we go back to Cos if we rewind back to Cosmel already and we had r done that again in the same conditions again without the diarrhea and not being like the first time, already there we would be able to shave off that order and let go sub 2.30 on the run there. Um, so uh, here I think that uh, absolutely going off with a speed that is pretty much what we would expect to keep more evenly there and then accelerate from approximately 20k is doable but again we have to wait for the day to see yeah yeah that's right so um joe skipper said that he wants to have a little gap um after the bike split so um do you think that there is some more pressure on the shoulders of christian than when he has to close the gap or do you think that uh, after chang george where he uh, finished that gap for as a right victory that um he is a confident to uh yeah race like that again uh, i think he is very happy with being <laughs> coming off behind and hunting uh, hunting down uh, joe uh, so 
uh, whether he comes off the bike first or whether he comes off the bike last and uh, have to bridge a gap or just going as fast as he can. Um, I that Christian will be in his own bubble. Yeah. yeah. So and during the race, what's your main job? So. Do you have some um, yeah, microphone to um, call some tactics to Christian and yeah, tell him how to take the nutrition or the gap to the other athletes? Or is it just a race of Christian and you're staying outside being nervous and <laughs> hopefully <laughs> he come in at the right time? Yeah, no, uh, I actually, um, we have such a good team that uh, for me when I arrived here and you see the atmosphere of the people, you see the work that the bike paces has been doing, uh, uh, swimmers, the runners or sponsors uh, with Kadex being here also helping us with the bikes and everything. I am. This is feeling more like a vacation than any other race that I've been to before because I feel everything that that we could do in this with this kind of setup is is done so on race day my job will be basically of course i will have, have access to communications so i will be on the radio during the bike uh, with uh, with the team and uh, communicate with them but most likely i'm only going to be communicating if there is an emergency or if the, they want to have some kind of information other than that basically communication is hand it, we, we we are confident and we talked about it so they keep it in the in the in the group and then i only jump in if it's needed yeah yeah when i look a little bit back so you as a yeah, team norway also with um gustav eden you train a lot together and also as a team and uh, yeah It's, it's more a team sport if you're looking from the outside uh, yeah. for the Norwegian team. So um, the different for all the others, they are trained alone. So for you, it's a main game or uh, does it change anything in the lineup to um, the sub-7, sub-8 project? Uh, so if I understand you correctly, you're asking about whether this is a new atmosphere for us yeah, or yeah. if it's more or less the same. No, I think, uh, of course, there are new... We, we met with the bike paces before, we've been on several team calls and so, and we had one camp earlier this year in Bordeaux where we met and we were able to train together and the same thing we did now in Bordeaux and one of the things that I really see and I like with, uh, with how our team is working together is that it's more or less the same atmosphere that I'm used to, to having the Norwegian team. Everybody is trying to help each other. If we're talking about, okay, what do we do? Like when we talk about contingency plan and everything, everybody is only motivated to do one thing and that's make sure that everybody goes as fast as possible together. There's, this is not a solo show. Uh, this, is not a, this is not the fastest bike split. It's not the fastest run split, split or fastest uh, uh, swim split. This is a team effort where we basically go together and we're going to make the fastest finish time. And when we see a little bit further to the World Champs on Hawaii and also as a PTO, how um, Christian told us, um, is this year a kind of special year for you? So out of the Olympic, uh, risen, such uh, some long distance, middle distance races. And after that uh, year, you switch back to the Olympic distance and with the main goal of the um, Paris Olympics. Do you think it's um, important to have such um, yeah, different uh, changes and also for you as a coach? Um, of course it's nice with the change but I do I have to say I personally prefer the dynamics of Olympic racing because it's the, the, the competitive field there is extreme uh, the margins are very small um, so I, I like that because it also pushes me and my mind as well to always constantly look for those uh, optimizations now of course we went into Ironman we are in many senses noobs because we, we haven't done this before, we started last year. Uh, this is Christian's third Ironman distance race. So that's we, we are learning so fast and we're learning so much things all the time that um, surely we know that we're just going to get faster. But at some point we just have to also pull the plug because we are going back to the Paris. And I think the, 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 let's say the scary but funny part with it is that if you look at the statistics there are no male that have gone from Olympic distance then to Ironman distance and actually actually back to Olympic distance on the podium yes surely some have qualified but they've never made very good wrestles from it but this is of course one thing that we feel maybe a little bit where we feel more confident because we are doing so much science and 
yeah we have so much data on the athletes and what working what is not working for each of them so i'm i feeling quite confident that uh, coming back for this yes it will not be without challenge because it's going from one extreme back to another extreme um but that's what drives us that's that's what makes it fun so the world record world champion tomorrow the world as uh, the first male under seven hours what do you think what comes next the olympic champion again in paris <laughs> Yeah, uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, Christian uh, Christian wants to go back to the Olympics, uh, and uh, after the Olympics, we'll have to see. Uh, <laughs> but uh, of course, there are some rumors around that uh, there might be some other challenges that are also tempting. But uh, it's still some years away. Okay, so now you have <laughs> created some um, yeah, questions which are coming afterwards, but <laughs> I think you won't tell us, but... <laughs> or do you? <laughs> um, we might, well, we'll, ha we'll have to see, but I'm pretty sure that if we, if it changes, uh, changes uh, arena uh, to another sport, uh, we, had, we don't come there just to have to do something different we come there to win yeah. okay that sounds great <laughs> thank you very much and good luck thank you so much